And also you can go to our website, which is vision2040.rdu.com. So thank you for being here. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Michael Langeth, our president and CEO. Thank you, Dickie. Appreciate that. And welcome, everybody. Uh, appreciate everybody coming tonight and spending time with us as we start talking about the future of RDU and what we refer to as Vision 2040, which we think is an important exercise that we lay out the future of what the infrastructure is going to be required for uh, the RDU airport. In developing those alternatives, we've got several goals we've established. Well, I'm not going to read through those. Uh, we're Condon Associates, uh, Colleen Quinn. She's going to kind of go through those very briefly as part of her PowerPoint presentation, so I'll kind of skip over that just a little bit. Each of our defined goals helps us ensure that RDU is positioned for future growth and most importantly serves our customer needs long term. In the development of those alternatives you'll see tonight, we've gone through a very methodical process to evaluate the different alternatives and there'll be what we'll call nine different composite alternatives that you're going to get to see tonight uh, and actually kind of look at. The planners have actually started this um, well, probably about almost a year ago uh, and we've gotten to this point you want to think about tonight a little bit like throwing a stone in the middle of a, of a pond. And when you do that, it starts forming rings. It keeps working further and further out. And so what they did is they started to look at runways and taxiways, the physical infrastructure for landing airplanes. Then we look at terminals. Then we look at roadways. Then we look at ground transportation uh, activities on the airport, general aviation development, and also cargo. So we're looking at all those things collectively today uh, as we're starting to put these alternatives together. And the idea is we're going to narrow this down to hopefully four different alternatives. We've got nine tonight. By late June, we'll get it down to four. And by uh, late summer, we'll be down to one preferred alternative in terms of what's going on. And of course, as part of this process, public involvement is going to be extremely important. So it's important that you're here tonight and you're participating. You also have an opportunity to go to our website at vision2040.rdu.com where all the historical information, uh, background information, like you see on these boards coming in there, it's available. The nine alternatives will be posted there, the PowerPoint presentation, so there's lots of information available that you can review and provide comments. You can provide comments to our staff will be here tonight. So again, we're here to engage and have a conversation because at the end of the day, this is your airport. So you should have some uh, input in terms of what's going on. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Colleen Quinn. Colleen is uh, with Recondo and Associates and she's gonna walk you through those nine different alternatives. Colleen. Okay, thank you everyone for coming out here tonight. Let me know if you can't hear as I use this mic because I'm not used to using a handheld mic. I'm not used to using mics at all. Um, so I'll, I'll try to keep this as uh, close as I can, but I may forget and drift away. But uh, in any case, thank you for coming out tonight. This is a creative part of our planning process, and we very much need your input at this point in time and uh, continue through the rest of the process. So um, if you've been to prior public workshops with us, uh, you know that I'm Colleen Quinn. I'm the project manager supporting the authority in the, the study. So um, on behalf of the planning team, we're happy to be here as well. And I'm gonna try to use both these things at the same time. They're going to work. Okay. Uh, so very quickly, what we're going to talk to you about tonight is give you a status update on where we are um, on the, the overall course of the study fairly quickly there. Also talk to you a bit about the alternatives process, how we got to the nine alternatives that we have to show you at the, at the back of the room, kind of at the end of the presentation. I want to give you that context so you understand how we approach it. Uh, and that'll help you with your questions and, and uh, giving us your feedback and comment. And we'll also talk to you about the screening, how we've narrowed this down from a lot of ideas down to nine uh, integrated or, or composite concepts. Uh, and then we'll encourage you to, to um, visit us at the back of the room with the boards and, and really engage one on one with us. I think I'm going to do that. Oh. Yeah. I'll get this yet. All right. There we go. Okay, these are pretty related slides. And if you've been to prior meetings, you've heard these before, or seen these slides before, uh, and, and heard us talk about them. Five major phases, we're well entrenched in the fourth phase on the alternatives development. And this will continue on again through the, um, essentially up to the next public workshop where we will present a single idea uh, to you all. And, goodness. okay, we have now jumped around quite a bit. 
if you're still following along, where we are in the overall study, we've got an 18-month study, and we are on track with that study uh, at this point. So we're, we're progressing as we expect to. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the alternatives process and how we've gone about this. Uh, and as you look at our alternatives tonight, keep in mind that these are not a firm development plan. They are not a rigid plan, but they are a, a concept to accommodate the growth of the airport over the 25-year planning horizon. So the, all the concepts you see tonight are subject to revision, to uh, evolution, if you will, uh, still some hybridization or some mixing among the concepts. So just keep that in mind. It's not a firm idea that will be built as you see it depicted on these, these boards here tonight. Um, first and foremost, we need to meet the aeronautical need. And if you've come to the, the prior meetings, you'll know that we presented facility requirements previously, which is the quantitative uh, analysis of what the future needs of the airport are in terms of development and operational uh, and safety issues. Uh, when we look at these concepts, we need to not only meet the aeronautical need, but do it in a way that is consistent with the FAA's guidance and criteria. Uh, that's first and foremost, that, that set of rules that we need to follow through the planning process. Um, then the other thing we take a look at is operational and safety considerations. Uh, so we're not just meeting the dimensional criteria, but we're actually looking at how the airport operates, the safety of that activity uh, as the, the future activity continues to grow. There's also a natural hierarchy among aviation facilities, starting with the airfield. It is the component that has the largest footprint and it has the most restrictive requirements from the FAA's perspective. They're very, uh, very clear about what needs to be and must be done on the, on the air side. Uh, as we move in from the airfield, then we look at the terminal as the second layer in the hierarchy. Uh, terminal's got to interface with the, with the airfield. Right, it's got to include not only the building itself, but the number of gates that are required to accommodate those arriving and departing aircraft, uh, and then as well as the functions inside the building, uh, the regulatory side, FAA, TSA activities. Uh, and moving inward from that is the land side facilities. And so these are all the um, facilities and infrastructure necessary for uh, stakeholders to access the airport, whether those are passengers, employees, uh, any other user or tenant of the airport. And landside facilities encompasses a very broad, broad category. It's parking, it's rental cars, it's roadway, uh, it's transit, it's anything coming into uh, the airport. Moving on from there, uh, the next in the tier are what we collectively consider to be a supporting, a group of supporting components of the airport, general aviation, cargo, and the, then the miscellaneous support facilities that keep the airport operational, including things like air traffic control tower, uh, rescue and firefighting, aircraft rescue and firefighting station, uh, and then various tenant facilities, nav aids, things like that. So I'll give you a little bit of the insight into on the three top categories in that hierarchy. The, the driving considerations are some of the major factors we looked at as we put together this, this group of ideas. Uh, and first and foremost there on the airfield, as I said, that this is the most challenging, the most restrictive from the FAA side. Part of that is driven by the aircraft fleet that operates there, not only currently, but in the future. And not only the fleet that's there, but the diversity within that overall fleet, the size and type and speed of aircraft. Uh, we also look very closely at the uh, uh, runway length requirements, particularly for the long haul distances, so for the transcontinental and international nonstop activity. Uh, very importantly, we're looking in this case at the necessary reconstruction of runway 5 left, 2 3 right, that is the primary, the longer 10,000 foot runway at the airport. And based on the analysis of the pavement conditions, uh, that runway needs to be reconstructed sometime in the next three to five years. A little bit of uh, flux in that window, but it's in the very near term in terms of runways. Uh, and then we also look at airfield capacity uh, from a, not only from the ultimate capacity requirement, but on an incremental basis to squeeze out and identify those ways we can increase the capacity of the airfield uh, in a stepwise fashion before the airport authority would need to go to that large uh, capacity components. So, so a new runway, for instance, would be a step function in, in airfield capacity. Okay, moving on from there into the, the terminal challenges. And again, the terminal, this is the interface between that airfield uh, and the land side, so the passengers accessing the airport move through it and on out to the airfield so they can arrive at the park. 
Uh, one of the big challenges here is the increasing gate demand, and we're seeing uh, in the quantified requirements, we're seeing an increase of about 50% of the gates, so 23 additional gates possible by the end of that 25-year planning horizon. Uh, in addition to that, the gates require uh, apron depth, and that is the ability for aircraft to move and maneuver in adjacent to the actual gate they park in. And at the uh, uh, existing terminals, both one and two, that apron depth is limited relative to the current fleet operating at the airport. So it's something that challenged us and required us dimensionally to, to look at very specific things in our alternatives. Uh, also, increasing international activity. As many of you are aware, the, the recent startup of the nonstop service to Paris, that's an indication of the continuing focus on international activity growth. We, we see that continuing uh, throughout the planning horizon, and we need to be able to accommodate the particular processing requirements of those passengers, uh, the Customs and Border Protection needs. I mentioned the changing aircraft fleet, and I'll just emphasize it's not just in the near term, but over this 25-year horizon, what do we see in terms of that, that aircraft fleet and their dimensions, their operating needs. Uh, we also look for the long-term growth potential because we don't want to define a concept that has a kind of a dead end to it, because at the end of 25 years, the airport will still be here, and it will still experience some level of growth and change. So we're looking for terminal ideas that provide that ability to grow beyond just the 2040 horizon. And we also look for the ability to phase in these alternative um, terminal concepts. And so looking for those ideas that can be incrementally uh, implemented. And so again, looking to defer as long as possible that, that big bite similar to the airfield. We're looking for that on the terminal as well. Look for ways to, to incrementally get there. Okay, the land side challenges, as I mentioned, these are all the, uh, the facilities and infrastructure needed to get passengers and stakeholders into, into the airport. Uh, the first thing we look to do there is maximize the, the utilization of the existing infrastructure. So that no matter what that is, whether it's the, the terminal roads, the terminal curbsides, parking facilities, rental car facilities, uh, all of those, we look to tap out the capacity there before we add additional capacity to it and, and truly utilize those efficiently. Uh, we also look, uh, at this case, at the challenges associated with a mixed curb front, and by that uh, you're familiar with the fact that Terminal 1 is a single level facility with a single level road. Uh, the flip side of that is or Terminal 2 is a dual level facility with a dual level roadway system. So that introduces very specific challenges as uh, vehicles access and mix and weave on the airport, and, and it creates some, some choke points uh, by necessity. So we're going to look to address some of that as we conceived of our alternatives. Uh, we also look at passenger convenience, and this very much comes in, into play when we look at things like parking and rental car. Parking is a very significant revenue driver for the airport. Uh, passengers look for a lot of convenience as they move, come into the airport and move between facilities. So that's something we emphasize in our, our alternatives. And then very importantly, connectivity. Uh, so all modes, accommodating all modes of access to the airport. Uh, we know we, we can quantify a lot of that, the parking and the roadways and all, but the, through the alternatives, we look to accommodate all modes uh, and not prohibit uh, any future mode as well. Okay, so now getting into kind of our process here, we developed a lot of alternatives uh, in each of the spe uh, specific facility focus areas. So we developed a lot of airfield alternatives, terminal land side, and then support facilities. And we go through those ideas and we evaluate them, we screen them with the idea of eliminating those that are non-starter ideas, those that will not withstand further evaluation and scrutiny. They don't compare well to the alternative, the other alternatives. Uh, so as you can see from the numbers there, we started out with um, roughly 10 airfield ideas, just about 20 terminal, 20 land side, and uh, nearly 10 support facility ideas. We screen those, we hybridize between them, and by that we mean we're taking apart the puzzle pieces and putting them together in different ways to see if we can improve on any of the ideas. Uh, so as we do that, then we, we mitigate any deficiencies or shortfalls to the extent we can within the alternative. Uh, and then we wind up at the end of that process with the nine alternatives that you will see tonight. Um, so they, they've gone through a lot of um, screening, a lot of massaging, and, and um, kind of cutting and pasting between the different ideas. Very quickly, uh, these goals have been shared on the project website. They are 
in the back of the room on a board this evening. They were presented at the last um, public workshop as well. So I won't go through these in, in detail, but just to remind everyone that, that these goals are driving our thinking on the concepts, and very much they will drive our thinking as we evaluate these different ideas. Uh, the, the goals, ultimately the preferred alternative, will achieve these goals. That, that's essentially a driver for, for us. Uh, and to show you essentially how we looked at those goals or used those goals as we screened through to get to this point, this is not an exhaustive list of the criteria, uh, but we've aligned, and you can see each of the criteria shown here, we've aligned that with the goal that it reflects or represents or covers. Uh, and so the, the idea again in the screening is to take out those ideas that, that will not withstand further scrutiny and really focus now on nine ideas that have merit, uh, some more so than others, some in different categories than others, but they're nine viable alternatives at this point. As we continue through the evaluation process, we will evolve these evaluation criteria. Some of these may continue on through the, through the process, uh, but others will be replaced by more finite, more differentiating evaluation criteria. So that's a, uh, by design, it continues to get more and more detailed. And this will advance sooner or later. Okay, the next steps in the overall study beyond tonight, uh, and as you heard Mike, Mike mention, we're going to go from nine shortlisted alternatives down to four. And so by the, uh, the late June time frame, we will have four ideas that we believe are good candidates for further consideration, further evaluation, and very importantly, further refinement. We will continue to look for those opportunities to take parts and pieces from one alternative and combine it with another, if in fact that strengthens uh, the alternative, any particular alternative we're looking at. So we continue that evolution, that hybridization process, uh, but the goal is to ultimately, at the end of uh, the, the evaluation of four, we'll move into a, a subsequent evaluation to get that down to one. And that one is going to be uh, ideally the best alternative that accomplishes the authority's goals and meets the community's aviation needs and, uh, and is supportable. The next thing we'll do by the time you would see the four alternatives is we will integrate general aviation, cargo, and support facilities. So you will see kind of a, an embellished layer of detail when we get down to the four. Uh, tonight, what you'll see on those alternatives are the top three facilities in the hierarchy. So the airfield, terminal, and land side. And again, those are the major components, the major drivers. Um, and so that's why we've got to sort that level first and then we embellish and enhance that uh, for the next time we present these. Now, we're also going to be superimposing on these land uses, um, and those will be presented or shared conceptual land uses at the June 28 meeting. Uh, so that uh, takes me to the next point, which is the fact that there is a meeting scheduled for June 28, a public meeting, uh, intended to present the four ideas, show them with the support facilities embellished, uh, as well as the land use uh, planning ideas. And that's going to be another opportunity for the public to provide their input and their feedback uh, on what they're seeing. So we want your feedback tonight, but we want to continue that feedback as well. Once we get down to the single preferred alternative, which will be presented at the fourth workshop, fourth public workshop, we still have work to do with that, uh, looking at the implementation of that concept and the financial uh, viability and feasibility of elements of it. Uh, so we continue on after the identification of that to ultimately refine it to be the best concept possible. Okay, the next steps for this evening uh, are to actually have you all go to the back of the room uh, and interact with each of the nine alternatives. There are members of the master plan team there, essentially anybody wearing a badge. There's also members of the airport authority here. Everyone is here with the intention of answering questions, providing additional insight, background, explaining uh, elements of the alternatives that may not be evident or may not be understandable at, at face value. So we're really here as a resource to engage you, get your feedback and input. Uh, additionally, there are handouts in the center of the room there, and the idea is that you can mark those up, you can take them with you, you can leave them here tonight with comments on them, uh, you can take them home and think about them and provide comments through the other avenues that the authorities provided, essentially just through social media and through the uh, project website. So we encourage you to ask a lot of questions, um, really with the idea of getting the understanding of, of the differences between the nine ideas uh, and really understanding how they perform. And we will encourage you as well to participate in future workshops. So the soonest one is the end of June, 
and then there'll be another one toward the um, uh, fall time frame that'll have that final idea in it. So with that, um, everyone's, our, our master planning team is kind of toward the back of the room. There's no need to go in order on these nine alternatives. They're just numbered for nine, so as nine, so we can keep them uh, straight. So just spread out and, and really take a look at all these different ideas and give us your feedback. And thank you again for coming out tonight.